Often when we think of shock, most people will attribute it to feeling surprised or taken aback by an unexpected event that has left us in a state of confusion. What we fail to consider, however, is shock in its truest medical sense, a series of biochemical pathways that interfere with our body's regulation after being unwillingly exposed to various stimuli. Shock is an acute condition in which the body is exposed to various disturbances which trigger the body's fight or flight responses. Although it can manifest in several ways, four main types of shock often take precedence and are most commonly experienced. These are obstructive shock, cardiogenic shock, hypovolemic shock, and distributive shock. A 64-year-old woman named Diana from Toronto attends Thanksgiving dinner with her distant family in Vancouver. After dinner, Diana heads to bed and wakes up the next morning with a skin rash across her arms and a fever. She decides to make a trip to the hospital to rule out any concerns. Upon arrival, Diana's condition worsens as her heart rate steadily increases. When informing the doctor of her condition, he asks if she has any allergies that may be causing this. This is when she notifies him that she has a severe allergy to peanuts. The doctor decides to run a few tests before diagnosing Diana with a type of shock. As we go through the four types of shock today, remember Diana's case to help diagnose which type she may be affected with. Obstructive shock arises when there's an obstruction within the circulation of the great vessels or heart. The obstructions can be caused by tension pneumothorax, an illness that risks cardiopulmonary purpose, pericardial tamponade where the pericardium becomes filled with blood, or thromboembolism, a condition where there is a presence of blood clots in veins. Signs of obstructive shock will include a significant decrease in both blood pressure and cardiac output. When a patient's heart rate is continuously increasing, they can become tachycardic where they have an increased heart rate or experience a collection of excess fluid growth in tissues known as the peripheral edema. With this blood supply being diverted to the vital organs, a patient can display cold extremities. Treatments available vary for patients depending on the reason behind the blockage, but most medical professionals will perform thrombolysis to separate the blood clots or thoracic and pericardial drainage, which are when fluid buildup is released. This type of shock has a mortality rate of around 10%. Cardiogenic shock is caused when the heart is unable to correctly contract in a coordinated manner because of a heart attack, also known as an acute myocardial infarction, or other similar causes which affect the heart's pumping ability. The associated diminished cardiac output due to reduced myocardial contractility also leads to the risk of developing hypotension, which is low blood pressure. Patients with cardiogenic shock also experience a narrowing of blood vessels, which leads to the cardiac system to become overwhelmed and further damage the myocardium. The patients may also present with diminished oxygenated blood flow through the peripheral tissues, which can cause cyanosis and cool peripheries where the skin can appear blue. Medical interventions can be applied to help relieve the burden of disease, including providing both oxygenation and ventilation to help increase the supply of oxygen. The overall mortality rate is between 40 and 60% of diagnosed patients. Hypovolemic shock is triggered following the depletion of blood volume within the vessels. This can occur when extracellular fluid is lost or blood volume is lowered through processes like active bleeding at a specific site or by dehydration. When there is too little blood volume throughout the system, the body in turn reacts by increasing the heart rate and cardiac contractility. Peripheral vasoconstriction, which is when your veins in your limbs constrict in response to cold temperatures, simultaneously occurs to compensate for the loss of fluid. During this process, blood pressure often plummets, affecting the delivery of oxygen to vital organs. Instead, blood is shunted to the brain and the heart, making it difficult to palpate pulses. As such, it is imperative that fluid resuscitation occurs through IV infusions of electrolytes called crystalloids, by colloid solutions which have microscopic undissolved particles suspended in another substance, or by blood product solutions to replenish whatever has been lost. Because hypovolemic shock can be so traumatizing for the body, the relative mortality rate for those who are subjected to it is approximately between 30 and 35%. Distributive shock manifests when there is a release of inflammatory mediators, which are messengers that act on blood vessels and leak fluid into the vascular system. 
sepsis, the body's response to infection, and anaphylaxis, a severe allergic reaction, commonly result in distributive shock. The immune system dysfunction associated with distributive shock causes a wide range of symptoms. Firstly, the release of inflammatory mediators is associated with a high fever and white blood cell count. Tachypnea, or a high breathing rate, and tachycardia, a high heart rate, arise to compensate for the drop in blood pressure associated with blood vessel dilation and decreased oxygen delivery to organs and tissues. Treatment of distributive shock typically involves the administration of vasopressors such as epinephrine and norepinephrine, which are types of medication that cause blood vessels to constrict. Additionally, IV fluids are given to fill tissues with adequate fluid and maintain mean arterial blood pressure, which is the average blood pressure during a single cardiac cycle. Finally, the mortality rate for distributive shock ranges from 80 to 20% and varies based on the cause. In summary, obstructive shock arises when there is obstruction such as a clot, air, or excess fluid in a blood vessel or in the tissue surrounding the heart, which results in inadequate circulation of blood. Similarly, cardiogenic shock results in an insufficient amount of blood being delivered to organs and tissues when the heart is unable to contract with enough regularity or force. Hypovolemic shock also results when there's an inadequate um, fluid in the tissues when there's a decrease in the total amount of fluids within circulation as a result of blood loss or dehydration. Finally, distributed shock arises when there is an inflammatory response, normally as a result of an infection or severe allergy, and this causes a redistribution of fluids inside the blood vessels. Now returning to the case study of Diana, which type of shock did she become victim to? If you said distributive shock, you would be correct. We know that she has a severe allergy to peanuts and is experiencing anaphylaxis, leading to the onset of distributive shock. Thank you for listening today to our presentation, and please subscribe to the McMaster Demystifying Medicine channel for related content.